Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ron. I recently hardwired up my GoPro 10 bones to my new DJI Avada drone and thought I would share that video with you. I figured if I was gonna do this, I might as well record it at the same time. And of course, I wanted to acknowledge and give credit to Nurk as well for doing the first video on this. So I'm gonna leave a link to his video down below as well. I probably wouldn't have done this teardown if I hadn't seen him do it first. Sometimes it's nice to just see others doing this type of work before you're feeling comfortable yourself actually doing it, which was certainly my case. So hopefully between this video and the one that Nurk did, you're gonna feel more comfortable giving this a go for yourself. And let me just preface this with saying that the reason I did this is because I know the GoPro 10 Bones footage looks better than the video that comes out of the Avada drone, especially in the dark areas in the shadows. Now, don't get me wrong, the Avada is a good camera, but for me personally, I just feel that the footage from the GoPro 10 with, when you combine that with the real steady, it's just a better look. So, especially for the type of FPV footage that I want. Now, for 95% of you, you're gonna love the footage straight out of the Avada, but for the other 5% of you out there, well, keep on watching. And to keep things really simple, I broke this video down into chapters, which are down below. So if you need to, you can jump around in this video more easily. But please watch the whole thing. I need the watch time. And I highly recommend separating out your screws as you're removing them because the Avada uses different M1, M2 screw sizes, and you just don't wanna mix these up. And if I'm not mistaken, I counted 32 screws that you're gonna be removing for this particular setup. And you'll also find similar maintenance information within the DJI Avada user manual, pages 64 through 71, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and a quick plug for the electric screwdriver that I'm using in this video, not sponsored, but it works great. I'm gonna leave links below if you're at all interested. So here we go. Okay, so the first step you're gonna do is flip your quad over on its back and remove the props. You have two screws for each prop, so eight screws total. And remember your props uh, with marks go to the motors with marks on them as well. When you reinstall them, don't mix up your props or your quads not gonna fly properly. More detail about props and the markings on page 26 of the user manual. Step two, flip your quad back over, top side, remove the two side screws toward the middle of the quad. Step three, take out all your motor screws. You've got three screws for each motor, so 12 screws total here. Step four, now again, on the bottom side, take off the two screws holding on the downward vision sensor and you'll need to disconnect the FPC connector. It pulls right off. Just don't pull or overextend the ribbon cable when you do this. Step five. Next, you'll wanna take off the two screws on each side that are holding on the landing gear, which also hides the antennas. And you'll have four screws total here. Once you've removed the screws on the landing gear, just pull the covers in toward the body of the quad and pull up to remove them. Then you can pull the little tab on each antenna to remove the antenna board itself. And pull all the antenna cable out of your way as well. And you'll find the cables recessed in the grooves of the ducts. Just note how they're actually in there so you can reinstall the cabling uh, the same way when you put everything back together again. Step six, next, with your quad still upside down, you wanna remove all four screws 
holding the duct onto the body of the drone. Just be careful with these screws when you're reinstalling everything. I did strip off some of the threading in one of the holes, putting everything back together myself. So just make sure everything's perfectly aligned when you start putting everything back together. You can accidentally strip uh, or pull out a little, the little thread inserts if you're not uh, really careful with this particular step. And once the screws are removed, you should be able to remove the entire bottom piece from the duct itself. Now, NERC's technique worked pretty good and putting your fingers in the middle and bending up a little uh, on the outside duct frame seemed to work pretty well. And this was the only tricky part of this whole you know, setup. It's worth noting that when you're putting everything back together, it may be easier if you slowly tilt and press the side with the USB-C port and a micro SD card cover slot first, and then gently turn the prop guards left and right until the pieces are securely back in place. You can also see page 67 of the user manual as well if you need an additional reference. Step seven, now we just need to solder up the two battery leads to the GoPro Bones wiring. And I just stripped back enough of the heat shrink on the Avada to make my solder connections. You don't need a whole lot pulled back here. And in this view, the red cabling to the GoPro Bones is my positive lead and the, that corresponds to the leads on the actual Avada battery. Positive is on the right outside part of the quad and the negative is the center lead on the Avada, which corresponds to the black cable going to my GoPro bones. And once everything's soldered, it's just a matter of running the GoPro leads through the Avada in a way that the wires don't get crushed when you put everything back together again. And I did use the same technique that, that NERC had used, uh, running everything through the openings within the Avada frame itself. And that brings us to the reassembly. Of course, you're just going to reassemble everything exactly the same way you did to disassemble all of this. And when you're putting the duct pieces back onto the body of the Avada, just be sure to pull your antenna wires back through and out of the way and pull your GoPro leads through the openings of the duct pieces on the Avada. Otherwise, you're going to crush the GoPro leads uh, when you reattach all the pieces. And the only thing I did differently was add a few Velcro pieces to the GoPro leads so that if I wasn't using the GoPro bones, that these leads weren't just flopping around. And I could also stick uh, the battery leads to the body of the Avada and I can use the drone either with or without the GoPro bones attached to it. So just want to give myself some options. I also decided to mount the GoPro right onto the Avada battery with a standard GoPro adhesive mount. So I'm not interfering with the Avada's GNSS uh, module and the number of satellites the Avada is connecting to for stabilization when it's in sports or normal modes. And I did do a quick flight test in the kitchen just to make sure everything is working properly. Everything's balanced so it looks good. I can't wait to get out there and get some great GoPro Bones 10 footage with my Avada and this setup. So I hope you'll come back, check out those videos once I've had a chance to play around with this new setup. With the GoPro setup I'm using, I did confirm I'm not getting any of the Avada frame in the video footage. And I feel like mounting the GoPro onto the battery gives me a little more flexibility on the positioning of the GoPro itself. And as I also mentioned, it's less likely to interfere with that GNSS module. I'm gonna also play around with the extended GoPro mount using it versus not using it. As I've heard, getting rid of the extended mount piece for, on the GoPro will reduce some of that extra vibrating or the micro jitters. Some people are reporting with that setup and when trying to fly using the GPS modes like normal or sports mode specifically. So shout out to Furious Pugs for that piece of information as well. And that's really it. Do me a favor, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Until next time, take care. We're gonna see you in the next video.